up YouTube, you already know. The Latin Assassin except Big Lou tapping back in. Well, what it do with Big Lou and MCR2, baby, baby. So, as you can tell from that thumbnail, switch, switch the script up a bit here, and we're going into some sports, right? Uh, two, two genders, uh, men and women, one collegiate, one professional, obviously. Uh, some big time milestones. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, Iowa uh, Hawkeye female, uh, a female NCAA team, Division One. Caitlin Clark, right? Uh, she's first player ever to record uh, thirty six hundred points. 1,000 assists and 900 rebounds, right? She's the all-time leading scorer with a total of 3,685 points. And this all-time, men or women's, NCAA, she's number one. She just surpassed, going into the last game of the season against, uh, uh, it was Iowa, her team, Iowa Hawkeyes, against the Buckeyes, Ohio State Buckeyes. And they won 93-83. And this is where she surpassed uh, just before the half, she hit a free throw to surpass by one point Pistol Pete Maravich, who finished his collegiate career with 3,667 points. So she was 18 down uh, going into that last game of the season, and she went up eight. Uh, she's outscored him by 18 now. Uh, she ended up finishing that game with 35 points. Uh, she scored 30 points or more in 55 of her collegiate games, including 18 this season. Uh, her career high is 49 points against the Michigan Wolverines. And in her four seasons at Iowa, she averaged 26.6 points in her freshman year, 27 in her sophomore year, 27.8 in her junior year, and 32.3 in her senior year. Now, she made it's it's been estimated and reported that she made about nine hundred grand with the NIL, and if you're not familiar with that, is that's N stands for name, I stands for image, and L stands for likeness. So uh, NIL name image likeness nine hundred over nine hundred grand she made. Uh, it's said that if she was to may uh, retain uh, return to uh, Iowa for a fifth season. And the reason they're doing this is because of uh, time lost uh, during the COVID era, you know, the, when COVID went down, uh, which she, she's declining and she's going to enter the NBA, uh, the, excuse me, the WNBA draft this year, where she's expected to go first overall. Um, it's said, though, for NIL for her next year, they're saying that she would make upwards of $3 million, uh, which is uh, pretty much... Uh, triple what she's making now and then some right um her and i've heard this reported in a couple different ways i heard the first time i heard it was from bob costas he said that she will make with the rookie contract ninety thousand dollars to go into the nba the WNBA, excuse me and then she'll probably top out top top uh, uh salary is about 250 grand in the WNBA. um because they have they don't have that big of a schedule, you know. I think it's like thirty games. I think the season is forty games, maybe. It's definitely let uh, half than the NBA. Um, but you know they're getting there. They're getting there. I mean, as far as uh, uh, especially with this uh, Caitlin going into the NBA, they're going to get a way more exposure. All of the games that she played at Ohio, I mean, uh, excuse me, Iowa were sold out. Uh, you know what I mean? So she's a big hot commodity. She's going to be the first overall pick. Uh, I believe it's. Oh, man, I think it's the Indiana team has the first pick. Um, and last year they had the first pick. So you're going to join the first pick of last year and the first pick of this year together, which is kind of like, it's kind of like, but it's not really with Shaq and uh, Chris, uh, Shaq and Chris Weber, but Chris Weber was traded for the third pick, which ended up being Anthony Hardaway out of Memphis State. So it's, you know, kind of like that, but not quite. Uh so I heard Bob Costa say uh, 90, uh, 90,000 uh, uh, rookie contract WNBA. But then I, I heard said by a couple other people on on uh, 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 
sports channel and then I looked I looked at I tried to look up some things myself and I found seventy six thousand and then next to it it said including incentives. So that could be depending on what the who, how the GM wants to do the contract. It could be if you score at least you know you'll get this amount of money if you average this many points, uh, this many rebounds, this many assists. You get this amount of money if you uh, if you make it to the All Star game. Uh, uh, you'll get more money if you play every game of the year without injury or missing a game. It just depends, you know. It depends how they how they raise that. But uh, I thought that uh, this was a huge accomplishment from this from the Caitlin Clark. Um, and if people don't know, Pistol Pete, Pistol Pete was a, a ball handling genius. I mean, he was a scoring machine at one point too, but then he ended up getting hurt. And uh, uh, I think I think he got hurt and that's career ended early or something like that if I remember correct. It's before my time, but I definitely know who Pistol Pete was. He he used, he used to make a lot of passes like magic look, no look passes. He was a you know he oh damn. He was like John Stockton, Magic Johnson, uh uh Steve Nash all in one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, very excellent ball handler. I remember seeing old videos of him with red arrow back and he's showing it red old school, you know, things that he used to do growing up, how he practiced to dribble the ball and stuff like that, right? So, yeah, uh, wish uh, Caitlin Clark a, a bright future in the WNBA and beyond with her, her life, uh, you know what I'm saying, in whatever direction she goes. Uh, now, flip the script. We're talking about LeBron James, King James, uh, what was his other nickname? Uh, chosen One, fresh out of high school, 18 years old, out of Akron, Ohio. Drafted first overall in 20, 2003 because he becomes the rookie of the year. It's a race between him and his partner, uh, Carmelo Anthony, but he ends up winning, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go <clears throat> what he just accomplished. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think when when I originally seen the, the ad, uh, not the ad, but the this this these two uh, athletes being spoke about, it was on the same news channel. And it was about the weekend coming up that, oh, wow, hold on. It was about the weekend coming up that uh, two, two, you know, two historic things were going to go down in, in the game of basketball. And it was a weekend. I think one game was Sunday, one game was Saturday. And like I already mentioned, Kate Clark needed 18 points to surpass Pistol Pete Maravich for the all-time leader, uh, all-time overall leader period in the NCAA for all-time scoring uh, uh, leader or getter, however you want to say it. Now, LeBron needed, I, I believe it was nine points at the, uh, before that game, that weekend game, to to accomplish the 40,000 mark, which is the first person, first player in NBA history to do so. Obviously, he took the number one spot when he passed Kareem, with Kareem having 38,000 and some odd points last year, right? Uh, so he surpassed the number one. Kareem, who had that record since, uh, let's see, he retired in 88, or 87 or 88, I believe it was. Uh, he probably accomplished that a few years before that. I bet, I can't think right off the top of my head, but you figure, uh, like Hank Aaron, for example, here he hit 715, you know what I mean? Uh, whatever year that was, I don't remember. Uh, I know it was early in the 70s sometimes. And then he went on to hit another 40 more home runs to uh, finish his career with 755. So he set, you break the mark at some point, Jabbar did, and then kept going. And I, I want to say he passed Will Chamberlain, but I could be wrong. Um, it's just the top, off the top of my head. So LeBron ends up scoring the nine points and then some. And at this particular moment when I was uh, researching this, um, as of the end of the month of February, he was at 40,067. So he's probably... They probably played four or five. Well, what's today? They probably played four games at least, and he's you know he averages twenty five points a game. So you figure that's another hundred, right? At least something like that. Um, he was the youngest player to reach uh, ten thousand points at twenty three years old in some days, uh, beating uh, Kobe, who was twenty four in some days. You know what I mean? Um, he's entering his he's in his twenty first season, right? And he's still averaging twenty five points a game. Now the only other NBA players. Um, that were able to get to a, uh, a 21st, 21st season, there's six of them, right? And I'll go down a list and let you know who they are. Uh, Vince, Vince Carter, he averaged 7.4 points in his 21st season. 
Dirk Nowitzki, he averaged 7.3 in his 21st season. Robert Parrish, the Chief, he averaged 3.7 points in his 21-year uh, year career. KG, Kevin Garnett, he averaged 3.2 in his 21st NBA season. Moses Malone averaged 2.9 points a game in his 21st season. And the last one being Kevin Willis. He averaged 3.2 points a game in his 21st season. If you combine all six of those guys, right, all six of their uh, points per game, it comes up to 26.9. Not even beating LeBron by two points. So that's a huge thing there. Now, he has a streak going that's still going uh, where he scored 10 points or more every game in the last 17 seasons, right? And that streak is 1,202 games. And the old record holder was Michael Jordan with 866. The closest to uh, LeBron as an a- active player is Kevin Garnett with 564, which is well is way more than half of what is way less than half, excuse me, than what he's uh, where he's currently at. Um, the last game that he didn't uh, that he the last game that he didn't score 10 or more was a, Ga- a Cavs Bucks game in. 2017 and he only scored eight points um and that was before the streak started but the very next game which was january 607 um well i didn't finish saying what i was saying so that game and the game that uh he ended up starting the streak nobody but him is currently in the nba that's a hell of a thing but then when you think about it that is 20 uh 17 years ago right but nonetheless his um You know, the way he took care, he's taking care of himself health-wise, exercise-wise, and all that stuff has produced much longevity. Now, you got guys, like I just said, they were in the league in their 21st season, but they weren't the same players they were in, say, season 10. You know what I mean? All these guys that I named all are all-stars. They were all-stars at one point in time. Um, And uh, MVPs. I think Dirk got one MVP. Uh... Moses Malone got an MVP, you know what I'm saying? So you got some MVPs there too, right? Uh, so a lot, a lot of it was uh, luck and, and longevity, I guess you could say. And the longevity being the way he takes care of himself, his body's strong. You know, he spends a lot of money every year on stuff to, to keep his body in line, right? Uh, but the fact that as he was, he's been able to score at least 10 points every game for 17 years straight without uh, injury, you know, before getting injured or, or fouling out. You know what I'm saying? Or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> what I was going to say. So he was, he's some of his, these are some of his accomplishments. He's a rookie of the year, right? Two two gold medals in the Olympics. And then he has a bronze in the Olympics. And then he has a couple other gold medals in some games, right? Um, let's see. Four, four NBA titles, right? And he's been to 10 NBA titles. I mean, excuse me, excuse me. He's been to 10 NBA finals games eight in a row and he has four wins so he has four rings uh he's a four-time mvp of the league he's a four-time finals mvp of the league he has 20 all-stars appearance he's got 13 first all nba first team he's got three all nba second team he's got three all nba third team he's got five all nba first defensive team and he's got one all NBA defensive second team, right? This guy's been a, um, this guy's a, not only is he a billionaire, right? He's looked out for his community uh, as far in his home area with schools. Uh, I know he's given back to the community as far as charity and things, you know, I don't know if he has his own charity, but I know he's given back, right? Uh, he's, uh, uh, he, you know, in my opinion, even, you know, in my opinion, he's a, a, a excellent role model. He's never got himself in those sticky situations, controversial si- situations, scandalous situations, anything like that for being around so long and then coming into this at a sudden, such a young age and being able to take on all the uh, all the hype, right? He lived up to the hype and then some, right? Uh, but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, he's a very... Uh, uh, He's a well, definitely a superstar, but he's uh, he's he's a great, a uh, uh, good, a uh, good humanitarian off uh, off the court as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and yeah, he's uh, what a hell of a comp. Forty thousand points scored, 
Kareem, like I said, has 38,000. Uh, Kobe and Karl Malone, they're somewhere around 37 and 36,000. I think Mike Michael Jordan has something like 32,000. There's really nobody that's going to threaten. There's nobody's going to threat that right now. The 40,000 points? No. Uh, Kevin Garnett, I mean, excuse me, Kevin Durant could get up there to like, you know, he could get up there to 30,000. That's possible. Dirk's up there at 30,000. I think KD could do it, 30,000, but he's not going to touch 36,000 or nowhere near 40,000. That's for sure. So, again, you know, LeBron James has got a lot of accomplishments uh, that, you know, that's put him as as the GOAT. It's a lot of people's minds. Uh, I'm not going there with that on this video, but um, – you can it, it can he he can always be in the conversation in that conversation though no matter what even if I was put him there at number one or two or three wherever you know it, it's still his name's in there and the, his his name is definitely always in the mix with I, and it's my and it's only in my opinion MJ Kareem and him you know I don't have Kobe up there like that Kobe's I got Kobe up there but not up that up there you know what I'm saying so uh, just a little something on sports news. Probably a lot of you've heard about this already. Maybe a lot have it. Uh, I got a few different other things that I got coming out. I got a lot of different uh, ideas for videos, and I just got to. I'm just gonna figure out from here on out how, which which ones to go with next. Because as you guys seen yesterday, I did start a little bit on some political stuff, um, and I'm not stopping there. Like I, I mentioned before, I'm not gonna stay quiet no more. But I don't want to go into that on this video. This is about accomplishments and. Salute uh, LeBron James and Kate and Clark for their accomplishments, accolades, careers, and and then some, and in their life beyond uh, playing. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, if this is the first time you're coming to the channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video if you like it. Also uh, share it if you like if you would do so. Um, and when you're hitting that subscribe button, hit the bell, the bell notification, and then you have the option of hitting all. And you'll be notified every time a, a, a pre-recorded video, a shorts video. They, most of my shorts, I put the, the bulls, my American bullies in it. Um, I got two puppies up still for that are available. Their ears were just cropped a few weeks back. They got all three rounds of their vaccines. Um, the worming's up to date. Um, and I'm in Northern California, so anybody interested, let me know. We can make it happen, Captain. And I'm not, and they're going real cheap like too. Uh, they got to get on down the road already. So anyways, I uh, appreciate anybody that comes in and watches, slides on in, drops a comment, shares their perspective on whatever the topic is of the video. And uh, it's all good in Hollywood.